I thank you all for coming along for this council meeting and I'll start off with apologies for absence. Thank you Mr Mayor. We have apologies from Councillor Carmichael and Councillor McMahon, Councillor Christie and Councillor Armstrong are not present. Declarations of interest, is there any declarations of interest? Town Mayor's announcements. Uh, the first thing I've got to say is there were only two occasions that I was called out for last month. Last month I went to the coffee morning for the Catchgate and Field Plain Partnership and I attended a carol service at Chilton? Chilton? Yeah. Chilton. Chilton. At Chilton. <coughs> the Mayor's carol service at Chilton. So otherwise <coughs> I have not had, had to go out at all. Now, just a reminder to everybody, because today is a vote on the precept, etc., that any councillor who is in arrears cannot vote on the precept. So just to remind, the town clerk has already reminded us previously, but I'm just bringing it to your notice, being a precept meeting this time. The next item is the public participation. Excuse me, Mr. Mayor. Yes. Oh, sorry. Um, could I just remind members that it is a full council meeting, so please, unless you're not able to um, wait to be recognised by, by the Mayor before you speak, please stand while speaking. Please set your phones to silent or switch them off. And um, we are recording the meeting, and I believe there are some members of the public recording the meeting. Keep your hands up if you're recording the meeting, please. You have two members of the public recording the meeting. Okay, thank you. Now we come to public participation. Uh, there were no previous, previous notices for any questions. Are there any questions from the public today? None. Now we go on to item five, the confirmation of the minutes. To approve as a correct record and sign the minutes of the following meetings. The ordinary council meeting, which is the attachment A. Does anyone have anything to comment on this, these minutes? Chair. Minutes of the other moved, seconded. Moved and seconded by Councillor Stevenson. of the other meetings to receive the minutes of the following meetings 12th December projects and initiatives 13th December finance and governance 9th of January projects and initiatives and the 10th of January finance and governance um, I would just like to leave a comment about um, the 10th of January finance and governance minutes okay. um, just ask um, the point about um, just with regards to when we're talking about the budget setting and the rationale behind that um, I would just like to add in um, just a, another sentence to that um, just regarding the fact that as well as the, the the rationale that's already there, that we're looking at rebalancing the budget in order to give ourselves flexibility to start um, focusing or refocusing onto um, frontline services. So as well as administration and data protection, um, that uh, it was also about giving us some flexibility around rebalancing the budget, focusing on frontline services, if we could add that in. We'll know that, but obviously it's for the, when it comes back to committee, yeah. the minutes to be amended, we'll yeah. make a note of that, bring it back to committee. Okay, that's moved. Any other comments you can make? <coughs> Shall we receive those minutes, please? Yeah. <coughs> 
Now it is item seven, which is accounts for payment and bank reconciliation. Um, yeah, Mr. Mayor, obviously these would normally be presented at finance, but due to the Christmas break, they weren't quite ready in time. Um, so they should have gone to the last finance meeting. You will notice there's a new attachment this month, which is the fact sheets. Hopefully members have sort of seen the cash book page and I can link the two together. Is, is, is that working okay? Can you make sense of that? Yeah. Yeah. Are there any comments on the accounts, please? Can we move that they're accepted? We need them to be approved. Okay, can we approve them, please? Okay. Okay, can we note, note the bank reconciliation, please? We go on to the next item, which are the recommendations of the committee meetings. The finance and governance, governance meeting. <coughs> Recommended the budget and the staffing on items 10 and 13. So those some um, the recommendations are on those items. Come to those items. Yeah. 10 and 13. Now we go to projects and initiatives. Since the meeting held on the 20th of November, the projects and initiative committee has made the following recommendations. Environmental cleanup team <coughs> to bring it home in-house. Yeah. Um, I have had a, a query, a question from Councillor Tully in relation to the environmental cleanup team. Um, unfortunately, I can't give him the answer in part A because it's, it's, it's all tied up with the staff initiative part B. So um, could I just recommend that we defer the decision on that one until we've actually had that conversation in part B? Is that all right? So the Councillor Tully's a question to be cleared up. Is that okay, Councillor Tully? Yeah, thanks. Fine. Fine. Christmas events. <laughs> Christmas events. Any comments on that? Do we accept the recommendation? Police cars, the proposal put forward. Are we ready to accept that? Well, we'll see. We've built some heads and then we'll get up over a second at the end of the day. Okay. Comms and marketing budgets. Do we accept that? Yes. And the stars, youth, and community. That we recommend that the, uh, that, that the project be funded on 2018 19. 28 to 19. Is that okay? Subject Council, to. Councillor, yes. Uh, thanks, uh, thanks, Mr. Mayor. I just wanted to ask um, if anything had been um, anything more happened about the gate at all. Which is the bit where um, I think Alan was just about to mention this when I sort of jumped in this The detailed activity plan? Yeah. Well, I haven't, I haven't actually got anyone working on that because we haven't agreed that's what we're going to do. So essentially if if council accepts that recommendation then I'm going to get a meeting with the with the stars people together and just tell them what we want to bring them back to community as well. If that's acceptable. Yeah. So can I move the parcel point? Council Um through you chair can I ask about the um the separate fifteen thousand pounds that we were seeing and asked I, I asked if there was a way that we could perhaps link that into some specific um, mental health program <coughs> for young people, um, but some specialised, you know, with a, I don't know, you know, whoever is deciding to choose, but, but specific, um, I've been having a few conversations and, and it seems to be that there is a gap, you know, there is a space where, where you, can, you can do something. Um. <clears throat> just, just to respond to Councillor Nicholson, obviously Councillor Nicholson made that point at the committee meeting. Um, my understanding of the position is, is that although the 15,000 has been put into the budget against youth provision, general youth provision, I think the committee needs to sit down and decide what the criteria are to bid into that pot. Um, I think it's just at this point an allocation of money and we need to review what the criteria are going to be. 
Are there any comments on the what's, what's been said? Councillor yeah, I think it's, it's worth saying that um, when we had the presentation of the committee by the STARS project, there was a mental health element to it. I know we've been looking at a um, chat and chill session, and I think James answered through some of the volunteer work he's done through Pactivate that the STARS Youth Project were already providing some <coughs> service and making the <coughs> specialist services provided by the county council and others. Um, if needs be. I think the point of that, the, the strategic grant pot, which we'll, we'll discuss as part of the budget setting, is that that will provide a, a dedicated fund for voluntary groups right across the Stanley area to access to provide other activities in their localities, um, and in particular, you know, around school holiday activities and out of school clubs and that sort of thing, Chair. Thank you. Any further comments on this? Okay. Yeah. We are requested to consider re the recommendations of the committee and decide what to do. Can we say we accept all the five recommendations over there? Two to five. One, right? Two to Okay. We do need to discuss that one in part B. Yeah, okay. We discuss one in part B from two to five. Do we accept it? Yeah. Great. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we have proposal and seconder for this yeah, meeting. Always. Okay, let's have a show of hands, please. Okay, thank you. We come to item nine now, which is standing in blue. In blue. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think it's self-explanatory on the agenda, um, exactly what members are being asked to consider here. Um, Durham County Council through their civic pride team have for uh, the last three years, certainly as long as I've been here, been um, working with groups in the community um, to enter the Northumbria and Blue competition um, and stand the entry. Obviously it's something the Town Council has had some participation in. Um, I've been contacted by the civic pride team saying that they are kind of uh, you know, moving their project on elsewhere and asking, inviting the Town Council to <coughs> take over responsibility for entering the town in this competition um, and they have offered obviously it says it says quite clearly in the agenda what they're offering support from the civic pride green and green etc etc uh, they've even offered to pay the entry fee um, which is very generous um, so so really um, this is just for the you know council to make a decision about whether this is a project that they think they want to take on in the future so that we can uh, build it into the plan any comments on this please are we seeing? Sorry, Mark. Mr. Mayor, yeah, just a um, point of clarification and then I'll just walk over for a bit and answer that. Um, I think that Stanley and Blue has been really good for Stanley. It's been um, an excellent partnership between obviously the Town Council and uh, Durham County Council and um, a lot of work that Councillor Carmichael's groups done as well and the, the Chaps group have done on the front street and stuff. So definitely like the support. Just, um, I'm not quite clear what they're actually looking for us to do. Are they looking for us to um, to provide the manpower to, to go out and work with groups um, in addition to what they're going to do sort of on their own? Are they looking for um, us to um, do back office functions to sort of advertise it? And I just want to be a bit more on that, please. Um, essentially, the, the, the way that it's been run certainly in the last couple of years is that the Pacific Pride team have had an officer who's kind of been leading and coordinating. So it was Chris Hymarch, you probably know, in the Civic Pride team, was the person that was talking to the community groups, looking at identifying the sites, liaising with the judges, arranging the judging days, making, talking to everyone else that's participating to make sure that everything gets cleaned up, tidied up, etc., etc. And I think what they're looking for us to do is take on that role. So I don't think it's going to be a huge kind of revenue budget thing. It'll be more of an officer time commitment. Um, and so it'll be basically an STC officer leading that work, coordinating with clean and green, coordinating civic <coughs> pride, liaising with the judges, etc., etc. And we have helped. I mean, in previous years, we've, you know, we've arranged like a sort of little reception in this building for the judges when they came, giving them mm -hmm. tea and cake and have a chat with them. So it's just about hand-holding the judges, arranging everything, coordinating the various services. So it's not something which will have a huge revenue budget implication, but it will have some officer time implication. Thank you very much. Um, uh, so that um, I propose that we get 
seconder, please. Is that okay by everybody? Would you like a show of hands, please? Thank you. Right. We come to number 10. Budget and precept, part A. Councillor Marshall. Mr. Mayor, all right. Just all right, just speak just on the budget. Just a minute, Councillor Marshall, just half a second. So can I just uh, move to have an input on this? Just so it's open and Okay. Name vote. Name vote on this then. Okay. Sorry, Councillor Marshall. Show of hands or not? No. Any councillor is allowed to request a name vote on any item of business. It's, it's okay. <coughs> right, Mr. Mayor. I rise to speak to the budget and pre precept proposal for the financial year 2018-2091. There shouldn't be any surprises in there. We've spent quite a few months now developing it. And uh, it, it came out of uh, the proposal that was accepted by the public uh, uh, and warmly greeted by the public in, in the way the voters, uh, the, the pledges that were made. And the pledges in there follow on into the medium term plan. And the medium term plan's been discussed on numerous occasions now being at various meetings, so uh, it, it, it's nothing that we don't know about uh, what the proposals are. The report from the clerk recommends an increase in the precept. If no increase is pro provided, then the ability to provide the improvement in the service we are planning would not be possible, and the un unavoidable cost would be required to be found from savings as any proposal of further reductions in the reserves would leave the council vulnerable. In 2012, the independents had 1.2 million in the reserves. Now this is 230,000 unallocated reserves. Can I ask, what have the public to show for the £1 million expenditure since then? Not very prudent. As the report points out, the local government pay settlement is 2%. The introduction of the Durham living wage for our lowest paid workers increases their pay by one pound per hour. The new general data protection regulations need to be implemented to ensure that we are compliant and we haven't got any option about that. In addition, we need to find nearly 11,000 pounds to pay for the by-election called for by the independents. What an opportunity missed to invest in our community. <coughs> Labour won handsomely and James Cairn was elected. Mr Mayor, I formally move with the right to reply that we increase this precept by 2.95% as stated in the report. Thank you Mr Mayor. Councillor Kelly. Mr. Marshall. Sorry, sorry, is this a point of order? Or is he rising to second the motion? Because we haven't got a motion on the floor yet. Point of order. Right, uh, right. Jim, Mr. Marshall, the Derwent State Independence did not call the election. It was the democratic right of the people of Stanley to have an election. And if you keep seeing that, then have that military work. If you keep seeing that, then it's yes. petition. The petition? <laughs> It, 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 yeah, on behalf, it wasn't a Derwent State Independence, it was on behalf of the people. It was on behalf of the people. Chairman, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, that's not true. Did you would be because the Democrat Party. Because, because the went round with the sheets and presented the sheets. Councillor Marshall, as for a point of order, it's, it's a disputation of an allegation made by Councillor Marshall, so really you should not have interrupted as a point of order. Please, let's run this properly. Is there a second to this motion, please? Uh, Councillor? Yeah. So we're following on from <coughs> Councillor David Marshall's comments. Um, I would like to focus specifically on finance. It's safe to say there's been an awful lot of really good work um, done since this council was elected in May with regards to the finances. The situ 
situation in Heritage wasn't a particularly clear one, <coughs> and divining the, the true financial situation at Stanley Town Council was not easy, as costs weren't really shown in a clear and simple way. <coughs> All of the information was provided, but by God, there was lots of it. Um, and we found it very difficult without the analysis that goes alongside it to really understand what the, the clear picture was. Um, and at this point, I would like to thank Councillor Carl Michael, who isn't here, but also our own staff, and also in particular Susan, who helped us get to the point now where there's some clarity about our finances. Um, the financial picture that has been revealed isn't a particularly good one, with significant amounts of the council's funds being used to subsidise the running costs of the Civic Hall. And this subsidy has meant that frontline services um, have been neglected which given the medium term plan that we as a council um, have developed, we find that unacceptable for our new council going forward. And through the work undertaken, we've been able to develop a good and balanced budget which rebalances these issues, put money back into frontline crucial services for our communities. So I'll happily second to Councillor David Marshall's proposal, and I actually urge all colleagues round the table to support this budget, which is very clearly focused on the needs of all of our communities. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any further comments on this, please? Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I need to, and I have tabled the document which members have got in front of them. I just need to, before a motion is made on the budget, I need to want to be very clear. Um, <coughs> unfortunately, I've made a mistake in the copy of the of the draft budget which I've sent out to you. Um, <coughs> if you have the draft budget in front of you, or you have access to a copy of it, on page three, which is the, the page where the precept is, where the number for the precept is, um, you will see that the number that's in the budget <coughs> there for the precept is 692544. That's the wrong number, that's an incorrect number. Um, and it's my fault, it's a drafting error. Obviously, I've, this, this document I've tabled shows you what the numbers would be for a standstill budget, a 1% increase, a 2% increase, and in fact, the 2.95% increase that is proposed. So, the number which says 692544 should say 706256, that's a 2.95% increase. And where the, where the extra money needs to go is on page 5, um, service centre, cost centre 300 environmental services, you'll see that we've got £25,000 in that, in that budget line. The balance of what's missing should be in there. Um, we'll, we'll, obviously when we get into part B we'll, we'll look at environmental services in more detail and that was your question council tell you about the costings for environmental services. Um, basically in this draft budget the staffing cost for the environmental <coughs> services team, so the two lads that work for Groundworks, those staffing costs have been put onto the staffing cost line on page one of the budget, and what remains in, on that line is the, is the rest of it at the moment, because we've not made the final decision about whether it's going to come in house or going out of house, but they've been separate because all the staff, it's in the, it's in the report, which is in part B. So just to be clear, that's the, that's the errata. There should be 13,712 extra pounds on the precept line, and there should be the same number of extra pounds on the environmental services line. That's my mistake due to drafting, which I apologise to the council for. Hopefully, with that piece of paper me explaining to you, that's cleared that up. But the 2.95% increase would leave a precept of £706,256, which would equate to a band D equivalent of £92.53. Now, the, so just... Any comments on this? No comments here. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm quite happy to make a comment because I've written a couple of things down on my piece of paper. Um, because I'm looking at uh, what we're talking about in the, the, the finance meeting. Um, uh, a band A, a band A house is going to pay an extra £1.77 a year, which make it easy maths, um, it's less than 18 pence a month for the 10 months you pay your council tax. And I already think that um, 
the 59 pounds that I've paid at Stanley Town Council is good value for money. If you um, if you utilise the events that are on, if you, um, for the things that, that you're already doing, then we're going to be doing a lot more than that with an extra one pound seventy cent. So I think it's it's good value for money. Just um, a couple of the a couple of the things, but a little bit of a list. Um, We've got the community events we do, uh, party in the park, um, armed forces day, things like that. Um, we're going to be doing support for village halls. Um, we're going to continue with our fund and advice service, which is the envy of many people in the county, because um, it's got the three the three strands to it. Um, we're going to become more involved in the planning like debate. That's the way I put it. We're going to try and get rid of empty buildings. And, um, I'm going to work with the county council on that. Um, we're going to have an expanded role for our environmental caretakers. Uh, we're going to reintroduce the neighbourhood wardens. Um, we're going to work with Stanley AP to deliver increased value. So we're going to um, hopefully get more value for the money that we're putting in by doing the joint things with them and not um, treading on their toes. Um, and we're going to, we've extended our youth funding to try and open multiple years so they get a bit of certainty so it's not just we do something for a little while and everything falls apart. Uh, and obviously we're going to continue to support the village hall as well. So I think that it's been value for money the whole time, but it's extra value for money now. I think that um, my household is going to get it at £61.69p in the next financial year. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thanks, um, I just want to say a couple of things on around the youth provision. Um, in Stanley itself, we do have quite a lot of good youth groups and youth activities in the area. We've got the packed house, they run the Chat and Chill packed debate. They've just started up um, a session on Monday night, which we call Space. Um, we've got youth groups down in St Stephen's again, um, bringing in the youth grant, which is, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about why, the, the criteria to meet them. Um, at a later date, but then the activity tent, stuff down South Moor and Oxford Hill Youth Group as well. I think supporting this budget will be able to get even more into there and make youth a bit priority for this time area. Thank you. Councillor Hanson. Councillor Dallison. Um, <coughs> Davidson. Davidson, sorry. Still need more. Stepped upon the, the advice hub. And I think it's a marvellous thing that we've still been able to um, support money advice, citizens advice, welfare advice, which is held weekly in, in within the venue. Also alongside, alongside that we have Packed House, who has advice services and help for people. And I think everyone will agree that there is a much needed service in Stanley to help support the residents in the area. Thank you. Thank you. Go on to the picture, Jack. Well, I just say I'm very pleased that Mark. I'm, I'm very pleased that Mark's happy. But you know, I, I'm, I'm a little bit unhappy as chair of project. One meeting at the council, we had no business. Is that right? We had no business at the council and meeting. Imagine that on project. If downstairs we wasn't getting three thousand pound a week subsidy, three thousand pound a week. Think about this. We could do a hell of a lot more, mate. Stanley and for the people of Stanley and all around the world, not just in Stanley. So I'll think about that. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any further comments on this? Councillor Marshall? Chair, this is Alan Marshall. There's a couple of things, and um, I don't want to, well, this is going to be political, um, but I think it's really important that some of the things I'm going to say are minuted so they're in the public domain and they're out in the open, and then we can put them to bed and we can move on with the plan that we've produced. Now, I think it's safe to say that, personally, I was very supportive of this council when we were walking the streets in the rain, trying to get it settled. Even more so now, in the big world of the Unity Council, it's important that we've got the town council to be able to pick up some of the slack, given the huge budget cuts that the county council's had. After a few years of watching the work of the town council in the background. I'm, unlike Mark, not overly happy that I'm getting value for money out of my council tax up here. And during the election campaign, I wasn't surprised to hear that those views were echoed 
by hundreds of residents who are spoke to <coughs> individually during the campaign. So that was part of the reason why I wanted to stand, to try and support and share some of my experiences with the council to get some leadership in. And I'm very pleased that I was successful in the election and I'm very proud to be a Stanley Town councillor now. But since May, we've begun the hard work of unpicking the finances of the council, the way the council's operated, and then trying to put in place a plan that was quite eloquently put by Councillor David Marshall earlier that the public had supported. To my shock and horror, some of the things that we've uncovered since we came in are nothing short of scandalous. The allocation of taxpayers' money over recent years is an absolute disgrace, in my opinion. And I think that there's a couple of things that I want to get into the minutes of the meeting. Okay, so all this is true. It can all be backed up with reports from the council's own finance officer. So nothing I'm saying is fake news or made up or lies. But it's raised some serious concerns about some of the financial controls of this council and the distinct lack of leadership over the past few years. So I want to start with the chairman's slush fund. The chairman of this council has had a budget that's been allocated over recent years on buffies and piss-ups for councillors, council money being spent on alcohol and buffies after council meetings. That's in the, in the finance report from, presented and provided by our own finance um, officer. We've had it used to fund what I would class as key election projects in independent target wards around the piece. Again, this is all on record. This budget was solely at the discretion of the chair, and unless it was illegal for a council to use the money on these things, there's nothing our staff team internally could have done to stop it unless it was illegal. Okay, so this was purely at the discretion of the then chairman, Councillor Nicholson. Okay, and I want that on record that these things have been solely approved by her. Money to fund buffets at a horticultural show that had already had significant money provided by this council. It's in the, in the paperwork that's been provided by this council's finance officer. And in my view, money to refurbish this building that was allocated by members without going through formal council process. If you go back through the minutes, you can see that some of the refurbishments on this place were reported retrospectively back into the council. No way to do budgets. I want to pick up on the, on the £11,000, or just short of, £10,900 bill that Stanley Town Council has just received for the by-election that was held within weeks of the main elections in May. And as colleagues might remember, this was following the sudden, sudden and tragic death of Councillor Graham. Weeks earlier, we got him with a resounding victory in a ward that's been a safe Labour seat for years in Stanley. So, and it was submitted by not somebody who lives in the community of that ward, not somebody who, who, who's been born there or brought up in East Stanley. It was submitted by a downside independent councillor living in Tanfield, instigated and submitted by Councillor Tully. Please move that. Proofs on the election petition that was submitted to Durham County Council for the election. The petition was submitted by David Tully. Okay, so this has cost us another 11,000 that as a council we could have allocated to frontline community services. Again, a complete waste of money in a safe labour ward where again we had a resounding victory and James was successfully elected. I also want to talk about the City Hall because we've had 50% of the council's budgets, approximately, going into the Civic Hall. The biggest white elephant ever. Plow money in, plow money in, plow money in. The majority of the council's budget going into this place, money stripped from frontline services over the years by scrapping neighbourhood warden services because the town council and the independents on the council couldn't reach an agreement with the county council, pull the services without any idea about how they're going to backfill those services, 
And then what did we see? You know, despite pleas from members of the Labour Party and Labour County councillors to sit down and enter into a dialogue, there was a letter sent to this council and to the chairman of the council at the time to that effect. What did we see? We saw real people from the Stanley area, we saw their lives deteriorate because we had more dog fouling, more fly tipping and more rubbish. How on earth are people meant to be proud of where they live when they're living in that sort of environment? Because of the independent round Stanley Town Council. We've had budgets on this place spiral out of control, no financial controls in them, staff members in here spending money well above and beyond what was actually allocated for projects, no checks and balances, no figures back to any of your committees, not one question raised in a meeting about numbers or attendances or value for money for the residents of Stanley of the money that's been thrown in to this place mine. Absolutely disgusting. So I'm proud today that the Labour controlled Stanley Town Council has put forward a plan. A plan that was endorsed by the public in May, but a plan that links to the consultation that the Downside Independence did in 2016 that nearly 500 residents from Stanley bothered to return and reply to, but nothing was really done with it. So I'm pleased that the priorities, every one of the priorities that we're going to spend taxpayers' money on, links in to the feedback we received from our community. This is a council that's now engaging with our public and the residents that we're elected to represent. And this is a council that, in my opinion, is now going to make sure that we deliver value for money for the taxpayer from Stanley. So at the next election, when I'm knocking on people's doors, people say, yeah, the town council have really improved the environment I live. The town council have made sure that my kids have got somewhere to go on a weekend. The town council made sure that there was advice services provided in Stanley where when I was in trouble and I was really at the bottom and I needed help and support that I could access on my doorstep in Stanley. And I'm looking forward to somebody telling us that the town council, you know, that they really understand that the town council is providing value money for money for them. Because I'm confident that by the time we get to the next election, with this longer term plan that we're putting in place, and with some changes that we've already instigated through the great work that Jeanette and David have done in reviewing policies and putting that in, that we'll be able to reconnect with the communities that we're elected to serve in the first place. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chris. Councillor Kelly. Right. Thank you, Chair. Mm -hmm. Councillor Marshall, the only reason I signed that form is because I was the one that took it down and presented it to Leslie Quill, and she had to have a signature. That was it. It was called by the candidate, I signed it, she's paid. Can you just prove that? That, that? that I called the election. Is that what you're saying? That I called the election? Because according to electoral services, down at County Hall, no, I didn't. Are there any further comments on this? We are asked to consider to decide the level of precept required for, for the financial year. Mr. Mayor, yeah, Councillor David Marshall has moved 2.95% increase in the precept. Uh, and I think Councillor Stevenson seconded that motion. So there is a motion to consider. Unless someone wishes to move an amendment, then there's a motion to consider. Are we in favour of this? Can I have a show of hands for the motion, please? It's a name vote, yes. Okay, sorry, my fault. It's a name vote. Those in favour, please raise your hands. Do you want to keep them up? No. They don't have to. Those against, please. <coughs> Any abstentions? Any abstentions? No. 
Councillor Marshall, David Marshall. Yes, Chairman, I'm pleased the motion has been passed and uh, the public will receive the services that we've gone forward with. It amazes me that this opposition should vote against it. They've never read one objection, they've never put one proposal forward as to an alternative budget, and here we are, here we are, with a greener budget, and I'm pleased that that motion is passed. Thank you. Councillor Dilley. Yeah. Sorry, Chair, but on your order, once the uh, proposal of the motion spoke, there's no right reply after that. So we'll just move on to the next agenda item, Chair. There's been ample time for debate, I think. My fault, you're yeah, right. Right. Just mention the right part It's now the exclusion of the press and public. Yeah, I can't be on the top of the